Hi, and welcome. My name is Buster Fisher, and I have painted this lovely tiger. I've put together a tutorial for you to follow along. It's my first attempt, so I hope you enjoy. Let's get going. Alright, so to start with, I, I've got myself here a 24 by 24 inches deep edge canvas and it's already pre-primed um, and I'm using the 6B graphite pencil which I like because uh, you can shave the edges and you can either use a sharp point or you can use the side of it which I'll show you that's the, that's using the side of it and that you can shade really quickly and um, it's, it's good for quick mark making um, also, this is a water soluble pencil that I use, so and later on I'll show you why I cho choose this one. It's nice and th uh, dark as well, but 6B is nice and soft, dark pencil. Um, so, what I've done before I start drawing here, um, I've gone and uh, found the centre point of the, the canvas by dividing it, as you can see the little cross hair sectioning. Uh, that really helps with posi positioning and centralizing the image. Oh that's my little water bottle. So I sprayed the canvas um, with a mist of water and then used a brush to manipulate the graphite pigment. And then once that's done I set it I spray and, um, and then you can see I'm covering it now um, with the first coat of paint. So I've got yellow ochre and then using a rag, um, I just take off some of the areas just to establish some tonal values, uh, the white areas. And um, now I'm using what... I've mixed up my own black here actually. This is... Um, I've used Viridian Green and um, some Deep Purple. And that, that really works well as a black. I don't really like to use absolute black until last in just small amounts. So this is um, a good way to get a really dark colour that's um, it's not too heavy. It's not the absolute black. So I've mixed so I mixed the two colours together and I'm using that. Um, and I'm just establishing some of the dark stripes now, as you can see. And I just fill in the rest of the painting. Uh, all the dark areas that I can see um, in the imagery and I'm just popping them in here and there. Um, I, I often use the side of the brush as well, not just the tip. Um, you get good, good sort of brush marks with using the side of the brush. It's a bit of um, violet I picked up. Uh, beautiful. Mix uh, some of that purple with white. Um, it's just a nice bounce colour for the, um, the yellow to work off, um, and because it's still wet, I can I can push that into the the yellow that's there, and it just desaturates the yellow a little bit. And I'm building up some other tonal values. Now for the whites, I use, firstly I've put down, in this one I've put down, I've mixed some, um, uh, it's it's like a teal colour, turquoise even, and I just put some white with it, just to bring, bring it up to a nice light colour. It's a good background colour for white to sit on. So I'm just sc scrubbing the brush onto the canvas and putting it down where the whiter areas are going to be eventually. So this is called underpainting, and um, I do a lot of that when I do painting. It makes the painting really exciting, and it sort of pops as as you build, and lends to the things, that, the choices you make later. And the good thing about painting, I think, is, is that you're allowed to be as organic as possible, allowed to build naturally, make mistakes. You, you'll notice I throw paint at it, and and inks and all sorts because I, I, I do rely on the errors that I make as 
as a way to you know, create interest in the painting. I've popped on some um, pink here. Now it looks like pink, but actually I've mixed um, ultra, it's like a, a, a um, fluorescent orange and white. It gives this lovely coral pink color. Yeah, you see, I'm just throwing the um, ink at the canvas there. Some nice olive green I use. That's just going to push that back a little bit more. It's interesting because it, it, it creates like a minty colour. Um, I'm using a flat brush, a dry flat brush here, um, and I'm just sort of pulling in the way in the in the, the way the um, the fur would be going to to cause some interest. Um, flatten it back by going the other way. Put more water and then drying it off. Oh, my heat gun is it's really good little tool because it doesn't move the paint around too much um, and you can get them really cheap. Um, they are very hot though, so too careful not to go too close. So I, as I go towards the edges of paintings, I like to keep them, blur, sort of blur them out a little bit. So you'll notice as I go through this that I'll be... Um, blurring edges and um, re-establishing them, blurring them again, and I, I keep doing that until it feels about right. Well, to give um, a bit more dimension to the cat's cheekbones here, the tiger's cheekbones, um, I've got some um, a mixture of colour here. This is it's a, a bit more saturated um, brown with orange mixed in there. And I'm just using it. I was just using it to um, deepen the cheekbones. So I've got a rigger brush now. Um, the long, I hold a lot of pigment actually. Um, and I'm, this is where I'm using black. So I'm only using it in um, certain areas, particularly where you want the highest contrast and um, most detail. So the eyes are prominent place for that and I just um, use the rigger brush um, to to create some sharper edges at this point with the eye I'm just going to measure using the back of the brush to um, just to make sure that I'm that they're about the right size and I, I do that a few times because um, as I build the, the colors up um, in the eye in the iris um, it, the eye tends to grow and because um, I put it on haphazardly really. um, and then I have to I have to go again with the rigor brush and just and just sharpen it again so I think I do that about three times, um, usually with the painting. But um, it's done when it's done. These paintings are done when they're done. You know, just... Yeah, so I need. I thought I'd give you a close up of their eyes because they are quite an important uh, part of the painting. Not only because they're the the focus point of the central piece of the, the painting, but it's, the, it's the things that we engage with when, uh, just as human beings, we, we look at eyes a lot and we can we, we read a lot through eyes, body language of um, a look. So they're, they're quite important eyes. So I thought I'd give you a, a nice close up. And I'm just blurring the edges now, so I've watered down some of the black, um, and then um, I use a, just a wet brush. This is a, I think it's um, filled in there. So I just use a wet brush and um, your fingers, you know, why not? And um, 
I'll blur the uh, yeah blur the edges in and just create um, a softer edge. Uh, so with the rigor, I've I've got some cadmium uh, deep hue, cadmium yellow deep hue, and um, white. I put quite a lot of white with that, and laid it down at the very edge there, where the light catches most. So the light source for the eyes are they're coming from sort of where the the brush angle is actually in that direction. And I'm using a, a slightly damp brush, um, and I'm just um, manipulating the paint, pulling it slightly um, into the centre. So using a rigger again, um, I've mixed um, some uh, turquoise, some cyan and white to create um, a really pale blue. I, I just looked for, I looked for references of Tiger's eyes um, and, and just selected a few that I liked and the attributes of the, of the iris of the tiger. And then I'm, I'm just sort of looking at the colors they're in and trying to try to imitate them as best as possible. So this is me building layers of the iris like you look at the iris and you'll see strands of uh, a fibrous sort of muscle structures of the iris and um so i'm just trying to build that um i might go over some of this yet um just um just an establish a highlight the highlight tones really at this point I noticed in the references that I was looking at, um, around the the rim of the where the iris and the pupil are, um, it looked to be quite a purpley colour. So um, I I mixed up some um, brown and um, and purple, but I'm just putting it on very very thinly um, because um, I just very subtle so um, oh, now I'm putting the highlight down it looks to me like I've got the brown and the purple again um, and I'm using I'm just adjusting the colors as I see fit now I've got um, that same slightly moist brush just to pull in um, diffuse the, that edge a little bit I always use my fingers. I don't think it's a terrible habit, really, but um, I, I think it just, I just, I can't, I can't help myself. Wipe away the paint with my finger and then wipe it onto my clothes, which is actually a bad habit because my clothes are absolutely covered in paint. I think that's quite the, the nice thing about painting is it just allows you to, um, well, you become sort of relaxed and you, you're not really thinking. It gives you a break from the thinking mind. So you're just re you're just looking, observing, and and then you're imitating what you're seeing. Um, trying to use the equipment you've got to create the marks, the shapes, the, the texture, the feeling. So. Uh, in the um, where the light comes across the pupil here, I notice that it it tends to um, take on a pale blue or turquoise tone, and then outside of that uh, pupil um, onto the iris, it's you get little white um, little white patterns. And I do this in almost every single one of my paintings and I think the more that I do it, the more um, detail I put into it. Because I think you see more every time you look. 
Um, and that, I think that's just the way, the nature of painting. The more you do it, the, 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 you know, the quicker you become because you've learned from previous paintings, things that you like and things that didn't work and you take them into the next one. So using the same uh, desaturated purple color I was using around the, um, the, the pupil, um, I pop in the um, bottom eyelid and just check it again, look to, um, to make sure that the, the two eyes match. And if by magic, I've done the other one. Um, and it's just a case of going back and forth um, adding and correcting um, what I see. So here I've, I've got um, the next layer of white. So this is um, is actually white, um, and I've mixed it in with a um, a thickening medium, um, and that. Um, it's really great because you can uh, it, gra it grabs onto the canvas and pulls, um, and you get lots of really thick, broken um, textures, which is perfect for fur. Um, uh, it does. Uh, some people think that it um, it's a cheating way of painting because it it's it's dead easy and it it looks like a lot of detail has gone down and in actual fact you've just moved the palette knife across the canvas i like i mean i like that that's my i suppose it's a preference isn't it um so i'm putting down um some good highlights now so this will be um around the eyes the mouth and um the, the outer stripes um Beyond, beyond the animal's actual face. I think with putting marks down. Um, with palette knife, it just I think it comes with practice and knowing how much paint you've loaded onto the knife, um, what kind of um, shape you might get should you um, put the knife down at a certain angle. So yeah, it comes with practice. Um, oh yeah, this um, thickening paste medium to use it I really um, it's good not only because it holds um, a nice thick edge of paint as you see I'm mixing some some up there in the bottom corner um, this this is me trying to demonstrate actually um, but I mix a load of a load of it up with some titanium white and then I've broke it into three um, so there's um, some teal, uh, turquoise, um, or cobalt teal as well, um, and then some and some white, and then some um, fluorescent orange was there with white, which makes that that pinky colour I'm putting on now. Um, and then I mix the two as well to make a, a, an in-between colour, which turned out to be like a desaturated, um, like a desaturated lavender, I would say. But it's just a nice medium tone to 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 put down if I wanted to. There's only a small amount I made. But. So the with the white of the tiger and the orange. I'll say orange for the sake of argument. Um, that's that's where I'll be using the um, the, the, the salmony pinky colour that I made with fluorescent orange and white. 
I'll just put a, a roll of paint on the um, the blade and then uh, and then just pull it across. And it, as it touches the canvas, like I say, it just generates um, a texture, much like lots of tiny little hairs, which, like you know, if you've ever seen a cat's face um, around the nose and the eyes, especially uh, the bridge of the nose, they've got loads of little tiny hairs. Um, it's lovely. I've got a little cat myself, and I'm always looking at his little face. So what am I doing here? Let's have a look. Ah, so um, as I was saying earlier, this modelling uh, paste I mix with the white. Um, as it as you pull it thin, it becomes fairly sort of translucent, so you can blend effortlessly, really. Um, for example, using using the brush, I'm just pulling it out and. The more pressure I put on, um, the thinner that paste becomes and the less opaque it becomes. So um, just with a bit of practice you can you can know just just, just about how much pressure to put on um, to to um, to taper it round and give it a three-dimensional feel. And sometimes I'll nick a bit of, of the paint right off the off, off the thickest parts and redistribute it in areas that I feel could do with a bit of a bit of that colour instead of going back to the uh, the palette that is. Yeah, that was a bit heavy there, so just use the finger again and wipe it away. I think the great thing about using um, acrylic paint is that you can really, um, it's very forgiving, you can just um, paint away and um, if anything is not working, either you can take it right off with a bit of water and a damp, a damp cloth will do it, um, or, you can, or you can wait for it to dry and paint straight over the top. So I'm using that, um, that, that pinky colour that I was talking about just to put down some highlights now this this is kind of scary to start with because it's um, it's quite a contrast to the colors that um, you know what I would consider to be the medium tones it is quite a contrast to them colors so it stands out quite a lot but um, like I say you can use the brush um, or even um, water or um, your finger again um, to to just um, push it back and the more you put on as I say the more opaque it is and the the um, brighter those areas are going to be yeah so sometimes you've just got to go for it um, I think um, I can put quite enough paint on the uh, the knife just then I'm just using the edge of the knife there to create them, them lines that lead up from the eye to the forehead. And then lots of paint on the, the knife. I'm, I'm barely touching the canvas actually here. I mean, it's just, just ever so lightly let the, let the paint touch and as it does it grabs away. And, Yeah, that looks all right. Now, so I've got um, a flat synthetic brush here. These are really soft to use, and um, I, I prefer them to prefer them than any other brush. They, um, I've, what I've done is I've just put some water on that, and I've grabbed a bit of the paint and pulled it up in one swoop um and this is this is why i'm doing this is just to diffuse uh, 
I say diffuse. What I mean is just to blur um, those those harsh edges of that highlight color I put down. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's somewhere between absolute highlight and medium tone. Of the, um, it's really so um, so much fun to put on these confident, broad um, highlight like there, look so satisfying. Just especially next to a, a dark colour, really just pops out. Just working that in. Oh yeah. So sometimes I will use the the um with the what do you call it? It's not the back of the brush. It's the the other end, I suppose, whatever that's called. Um, just to scratch away um into the paint um to create sort of fur line. Um, just a nice little thing. I, I don't know why I do it. Just uh, scratch into the paint. It's Nice, especially when um, when it's dried. Um, if you were to go over with an even lighter colour, it will pick up on the peaks of the scratch marks, and, it, and so with a bit of sort of drier paint, you can dry brush over the top of that, and it will um, it will give you instant lines that take no time at all to put into place. So I'm following the contours of the uh, below the eye there, which I think is quite important around the eye because it, it's, not only is it there in life, but all these marks lead you up into the eye. And that's the focus, that's the very focus point of the eye. Uh, the eye is the very focus point, you know. Using the side of the blade to to scratch in, like I did with the the, the um, base of the brush. Um, except for this time, you get much finer lines carved into the the texture paste um, and paint mix. You just have to work at, uh, keep working at the um, when you, at, at the highlights um, until it feels about right. It's only ever done when it's done painting. You just um, keep going until it's until it's um, until it says, "Oh, no more! Don't put any more paint on." Recorded this, and I have actually edited this video, but I'm just noticing now that it's quite long. Um, but I wanted to give you a good um, section of this tutorial where it's uh, showing in real time what's happening to the painting. Um, so I think you, I think you could probably learn more than if I was to whiz through the whole video. Um, in like a speed painting, well, it gives you a, a, a fast-paced overview, but it, I think it's it's quite nice to see how a painting is built in real time. 
That's my excuse anyway. Stick and do it. So I've mixed some that um, I've taken some of that sort of teal colour, um, which is the cobalt. and the white, and um, I've uh, and I'm just putting down some more of those highlights. It's not quite as bright as the white, um, so. The further away from light source we go and into cooler areas, um, it's a great thing there. And as you see, I'll put it in the, um, in that, what do you call that part of the eye there? That, the eye socket is really. Um, and it's, it's um, in shadow, so it's a nice shadow colour. You can use any um, cooler colour, but I just love this colour. It's one of my favourite colours, actually. Um, and it's a nice contrast to the, the sort of desaturated um, pinky colour that I'm using on the fur the highlight there. Um, so together they work. They they sort of they balance each other out. Ones are about the same in in saturation might not work as well if it was darker if say for example I used um, a vivid orange and then that teal color it wouldn't um, it wouldn't balance as well that's what I'm trying to say I might be wrong but you know works okay. I think paint tigers when I paint tigers I, they feel very much like um, an animal of resilience of um, absolute you know the, of resolve and determination perseverance um, so I think when I need those attributes in my own life, I tend to tend to paint a tiger, um, and uh, I find that with all all the animals I paint, they they all sort of um, relate to something I'm feeling or going through in my own personal life. Um, any kind of struggle or way I'm feeling. And then, and then I get a feeling to paint that uh, a particular animal. Um, like I say, with a tiger, it comes out to be um, much about persevering and resilience. To uh, for me, it's it's much about um, fight, fighting off the, the demons of the mind. You know, the, the negative thoughts and. Uh, that I'm sure a lot of people have those thoughts of, of self-doubt and um, 
I think because tigers, they're, they're so sort of they're full of. So beautiful. No, they are beautiful. It's, they just ooze a, a certain sort of confidence and flair, and they're naturally that way, it seems. And they remind me to. So it's okay to, to to think nicely of yourself. I think to to um, stop that that negative chat. Uh, don't listen to that negative chat and voice voice some positive opinions about yourself. They're very fancy, aren't they, tigers? Fancy animal. Very, very beautiful. It's quite, I always think it's quite amazing how a tiger has its stripes. Wonderful. Wonderful how um, creatures have evolved um, to fit into their environment. Ah, so now I've, I've put some water down on onto the surface, just in those areas, and I'm using um, a quite a, an old brush really. It's got sort of scratchy edges. Uh, it's it's not been washed, or it's been it's it's been used a lot. So the edges are of uh, the fibres there, um, they're they're clumped together and this that and the other. And if you drag it across, it just pulls the paint. Um, in fur-like ways, um, it's really effective actually. So um, I didn't actually know I was going to use it. It just happens in the moment, um, and because I was quite pleased with how that illustrated the the texture of the fur, I thought, well, where else is that happening? Where else can I use it? And I just um, find the right colours and and distribute that mark around in those areas. And de depending upon where in the painting would depend on um, how vivid I make them marks. Um, of course, like towards the edges, they become much more broken and um, or blurry. And tighter and more defined in areas of higher detail. I could do a whole painting just making the marks. I think mark making is my absolute joy of painting. Um, I find it so exciting, especially when you find um, a new way of making a mark. That's that's really exciting for me, anyway. Because the um, the hair around the 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 edge of the face of the the tiger, the white parts of the face, um, because that was described in such a way, um, I saw that it was also in the the inner parts of the ears of the tiger. So um, so so using this that brush to, to put down those marks just to describe that area of the head. I think I'll go over it later with um, a rigger brush again and just put some finer um, finer lines in there. But for now I'll put some dark colour there. Where is that? That looks to me like um, the black I was using, but I've put some brown in there too. Uh, and now that colour's mixed up, I'll I'll um, I'll look elsewhere as to where it's needed, and um, I just 
put it down. I've got lots of brushes. Um, I don't tend to throw brushes away unless um, they didn't quite make the water bucket and they've dried out. Uh, so you know, they become pretty useless then. Um, but I keep I keep most of my brushes because even the the battered old ones um, that that you wouldn't necessarily paint washes with washes of color, you can still you can still use them to make interesting marks. So I've got um, I think three or four tubs of brushes. <laughs> And I ought to get rid of them. I ought to get rid of a lot of them, really, because um, there are some that I use heavily, um, and there are some that I think I might use it, but I never, never get around to actually using them. So <laughs> by the time I've washed my brushes and put them back in the pot, that those ones that never get used have just disappeared into the the mass of brushes <laughs> knuckle using my knuckle and my fingernail and um I think I've used most parts of my hand to paint. Um, never, never my elbows, never my feet, <laughs> never. It's always just like thumb, finger, um, palm, uh, knuckle. I tend to use the knuckle when it when it, when I've run out of space. <laughs> Towards the end of the day, my hands are actually completely covered in paint. Handy palettes, I call them. If I get, get back on the bus in the evening to come home, and I haven't washed my hands still, um, I just um, I'm just caked in paint. But um, I'm putting down now. You see, um, it's. Um, some brown, I think it's raw sienna actually. Um, I have I have a warm brown, and I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you because I don't use a lot of brown usually, so I couldn't tell exactly what colour that is. Um, I have a warm brown, and then sort of like a dark, um, desaturated. But I, I think I use both of them in this painting. Now um putting the fine lines in with the whiskers and I, I zoomed in here to show you that um, when when I do a line to get a consistent line I tend to rest my ring finger on the canvas um, to stabilize the distance of the brush from the canvas um, and that works really well um, I thin the paint out quite quite a bit um, just put water with it and um, I get it to it just above um, like a thick ink is the best way to describe it and then um, and then and then uh, that's really good for putting line, lines down and like I said all the rigger brush is really great because um, it holds an awful lot of, of pigment Fast with this little bit. Got lots of little tiny wisps in. And then the other side's done. And now I've come to using some um, oil pastels and I'm using this um, this brand. I can never pronounce it. Just, I can't pronounce it as well. Um yeah so um we're the 
I use the blue on the um, the black stripes here, and because um, I noticed that when um, black is under daylight, it tends to mirror um, the sky. Um, now I obviously exaggerate that, um, but it seems to work. Anyway, I think that's the end of the painting. Actually, we've come to the very end. So if you've made it this far, well done. I hope I didn't put you to sleep, but I do hope you enjoyed it. And there's my tiger. Thanks for watching.